in the Indian Ocean, just off the coast of Somalia. There's a ship owned by an oil company. It's screwed by workers who carry out maintenance on underwater oil and gas pipelines, diving into extreme depth. One fateful morning, an alarm starts blaring through the ship, catching the attention of Engel. He clutches a small necklace, a precious memento of his late wife, and rushes to find out what's happening. In the comms room, he discovers Boss Carson arguing with their superiors on the phone. Mitch explains that the ship is turning due to a low-pressure reading on the pipeline and manifold. Despite Engel's concerns about an approaching storm, Carson insists on sending a team underwater. As most diving teams have already left, they have to gather whoever is available, even including a young and inexperienced employee. Engel protests once more, pointing out the dangers for the boy who hasn't gone below 30 meters before. But Carson remains firm and puts Mitch in charge. Engel informs young Jones about the mission, surprisingly finding the boy excited to finally go underwater. Meanwhile, Mitch goes in search of Hurst and is alarmed by the extent of his drinking. Despite Hurst's shift being over, he agrees to join the team when Mitch offers double pay. As the team readies themselves, Jones takes a moment to call his pregnant wife and let her know he'll be delayed. Sadly, Mitch finds no one at home. Finally, the team enters the diving bell and begins their descent into the depths of the ocean. Engel notices Jones has brought a jar of hair gel, leading to an accidental spill due to the pressure change. As they go deeper, Hearst's alcohol withdrawal symptoms worsen, making his hands shake even while putting on his seatbelt. When they reach the bottom, Jones stays in the bell while the others venture out to fix the pipe. Despite their hard work, the repairs will take a while. Jones tries to distract himself by observing the ocean's beauty and gazing at a picture of his wife. Suddenly, the bell starts shaking violently, and Jones rushes to contact the ship. It turns out the storm has finally arrived, but before he can gather more details, the ship's communications go offline. When Jones shares the news with the others, Hurst refuses to continue the job and swims back to the bell, leaving Engel and Mitch to complete the repairs. As the bell shakes again, Hurst urges them to hurry back. Thankfully, they finish just in time and reconnect with the ship. Carson reports that they were hit, prompting Mitch to request bringing the bell back to the surface. However, as they ascend, the bell shakes even more and they lose contact with the ship once again. All of a sudden, the bell starts dropping at a high speed, and the team has to brace for impact. As it hits the ocean floor, the alarm blares, causing Jones to scream out in pain. Mitch and Hurst quickly hold him down, while Engel uses his knife to relieve the pressure trapped in Jones' tooth cavity beneath the filling. Thankfully, the poke of the knife does the trick, and Jones begins to recover. As the system stabilizes, Mitch attempts to contact the ship again, but there's no response. Engel decides to inspect the damage outside, only to find minor scratches and a functioning beacon. Hearst checks the inventory but discovers no survival suits, just blankets and first aid supplies. Luckily, the backup heating system is operational, offering a glimmer of hope. Engel then swims to check the umbilical cables connecting the bell to the ship. His discovery is chilling, the ship has been destroyed by the storm, and he finds the bodies of the entire crew, including Carson. Returning to the bell, Engel drops a piece of the ship to prove it's sinking. Mitch initially refuses to believe the grim truth, asking Jones to try the comms once more. But Engel's mention of the bodies shocks them into reality, they are stranded with limited oxygen and little time left. This revelation sparks an argument, heightened by Engel's explanation that the company is in lockdown, and no one will come to their rescue. Amid the rising tension, Hearst and Engel almost come to blows, but Mitch intervenes, urging everyone to stay calm to conserve oxygen. With a moment of clarity, Mitch remembers the manifold location of the pipe they fixed earlier. He hands the information to Jones, who transmits it through the comms every 15 minutes hoping any parsing ship will receive the distress signal. Engel suggests detaching the clump weight to make the bell float and increase their visibility. However, Mitch disagrees, fearing that the pressure difference could be deadly. 
Suddenly, one of the oxygen tanks becomes loose, triggering the alarm once again, and the bell starts losing air. The team rushes to grab masks, especially for Jones, who is feeling dizzy and unaccustomed to the situation. Despite Engel's age, he takes the other mask while Mitch stabilizes the bell, discovering they've lost two hours' worth of breathing gas. Another argument ensues, Hurst wants to search for the ship wreckage for a new tank, while Engel insists on trying to make the bell float. Mitch, however, deems it too risky and urges them to wait. As they try to find a resolution, Jones continues to attempt communication, and surprisingly, they get a response from a Chinese fishing ship. Unfortunately, the ship declines to help, citing the absence of Chinese citizens in the bell, and hangs up. Later, Hurst and Mitch gear up to double-check the bell's damage before potentially losing another oxygen tank. As Mitch and Hurst work on adjusting the cylinders and valves, Engel watches them, lost in thoughts about a past trip with his no-deceased wife. Jones senses Engel's lack of hope for rescue. Suddenly, disaster strikes as a crane block falls from above, hitting Mitch and rendering him unconscious. Hurst rushes to help but finds Mitch's umbilical snagged. With trembling hands, Hurst struggles to free Mitch, prompting Engel to bravely jump into the water without a suit. His expertise allows him to detach Mitch and bring him back into the bell, where he wakes up after having some deep breaths. Mitch immediately scolds Hurst, declaring that his diving days are over due to his addiction affecting his ability to perform. Hurst apologizes, explaining that the mechanism was broken, and his drinking was a result of feeling isolated after 18 years as a diver. As time passes, the bell loses half of its air, but Mitch stubbornly insists on waiting. Later, Engel and Jones sleep while Mitch prays fervently. An unsettling moment occurs when Mitch hears radio static but realizes it's a false alarm. He checks on Hurst, only to find him gone. Mitch wakes the others, and through the radio, he contacts Hurst, who claims he's trying to find extra oxygen tanks. However, Hurst's condition deteriorates rapidly due to hypothermia, and he becomes delusional, rambling about his family. As Hurst suffers, an argument breaks out between Engel and Mitch. Engel suggests cutting the gas to save oxygen and end Hurst's suffering more swiftly. Mitch objects, believing they shouldn't have the power to decide who lives and dies. But before any decision is made, Jones takes matters into his own hands and presses the button to cut the gas, inadvertently causing Hurst's death. Unaware that Hurst was close to finding oxygen tanks, the group bids him farewell as Mitch offers a prayer and tosses Hurst's umbilical into the water. Later, Jones decides to go for a swim since he missed diving on the job. However, his reverie takes a nightmarish turn when he imagines being with his wife, resulting in a blood-soaked scenario. In reality, Jones wakes up from the nightmarish illusion, bringing a sense of relief to the group. Mitch checks on Jones, who begins to come to terms with the fact that he might not make it out alive and that his wife will have to go through childbirth alone. Curious about fatherhood, Jones asks Mitch to share his experience of holding his baby for the first time. As Mitch starts telling his story, they face another challenge when the heater starts failing, putting them at risk of freezing to death. However, Jones, quick on his feet, improvises a solution by using a torch on a water-filled tank, creating a makeshift steam boiler to keep them warm. With a little over an hour of air left, Mitch decides to write a letter to his family, expressing regret for not leaving the job when they asked him to. He seals the letter in a plastic bag to be found with his body later. This sight brings back memories for Engel, but their attention is diverted when the comms suddenly come alive. A Navy frigate has been dispatched after receiving the message from the Chinese fishing ship, but locating them might take hours due to the lack of exact coordinates. Facing imminent death, Engel proposes a desperate plan. They can mix the remaining helium with spare cylinders from the drywall chambers on the pipelines, which might buy them some time. Mitch hesitates due to their uncertain location, but with no bet option, he agrees. Engel suits up and starts searching for the weld chamber with Jones guiding him via comms. Engel faces challenges along the way, discovering bodies and running out of heat. When he reaches the end of the umbilical line, 
he detaches to reach the tanks, defying Mitch's warnings and losing communication. Mitch, fearing the worst, decides to put on another suit and goes after Engel. After finding Engel unconscious with a tank, Mitch pushes himself to the limit, managing to bring them both back to the bell. Jones helps them, and with the new tank connected, Engel regains consciousness. They now have two hours of air left. The Navy frigate contacts them again, informing them of their approximate location in an hour and a half, but they still need to pinpoint the exact spot since the oil company cut all communications. Mitch suggests finding the beacon signal, but the frigate explains that the sonar can't pick it up due to the scattered wreckage from the ship. The situation remains tense as they wait for the Navy frigate to locate them and save them from their life-threatening predicament. So, the Navy frigate promises to speed up their search, and Jones suggests making the beacon float to appear on the sonar. Despite the risks, Mitch volunteers to go. Before he leaves, he gives his letter to Engel, sharing the discussion he had with his family about leaving his job. In return, Engel reveals the guilt he carries over his wife's death in a car crash. Mitch swims up with the beacon, but encounters a swarm of jellyfish that sting him repeatedly. Despite the pain, he manages to release the beacon but succumbs to the stings and dies. Back in the bell, Jones is devastated when they lose contact with Mitch. Engel, overcome with grief and frustration, tells Jones to cut the gas. The young man is having a breakdown, fearing he won't see his wife again. Engel loses his composure too, but when he sees Jones struggling, he tries to comfort him. The situation becomes dire when another message from the Navy frigate comes in, stating that the divers will take an hour to reach them. With time running out, Engel decides to make the bell float up and disconnects it. However, the ascent stops when the umbilical gets stuck in the ship's wreckage. Engel realizes that only one of them can make it out, and he tells Jones to use the last suit and swim up while he stays to accelerate decompression. Engel gives Jones Mitch's letter and guides him through the ascent. Jones faces immense pain and fear during the ascent but manages to reach the surface, where he is rescued by a boat sent by the Navy. Meanwhile, the air in the bell runs out, and Engel, clutching his wife's necklace, makes a desperate attempt to swim up without a suit and tragically drowns. Some time later, Jones is reunited with his wife, but the trauma of the harrowing experience remains with him making it difficult for him to fully let go.